What is up, everybody? Josh here again, and today we have an Icarus Week 92 update. This week they've added the new Bone Armor set, as you can see here. They've also added the new Terranus mount, and it is the third Icarus mount that is currently available in Icarus mm -hmm. and available in all biomes. They also changed the distance between the wind turbines. They buffed modules to counter the nerf last week. And we now have DLSS 3.0 for NVIDIA card users. And more. Let's get into it, shall we? And week 92, new mount and bone armor. Icarus week 92 update. The new mount and bone armor and fixes. Hello, everybody. This week brings week 92, and it brings the new Terranus mount, as well as the new bone armor set. DLSS 3 support for those playing on DirectX 12. On top of that, they have some updates on Hypatia, module changes, performance improvements, and more. Notable improvements this week are the dynamic nav mesh was re-enabled this week, the lack of which was causing poor creature pathing and preventing creature deterrence from working. Fixed a case where players would not get mission rewards if they weren't present for the start of the mission after they had previously completed on the same prospect, for example, open world. Wind turbines can now be placed closer together, and we'll go over how how close exactly that is. Prospectors are now prevented getting sprains or broken legs from falling if their fall resistance is capped, and improve the mission complete pop-up to include the name of the mission that the reward is for, where the mission is the current one or previous one, and it is now showing the actual reward. This week adds Bone Armor, and Bone Armor is a new Frontiers item. You do have to have the new Frontiers DLC to make it. Unfortunately, it didn't get added to the Twitch drops in time, so they just released it for everybody to use. Thank God we don't have to do Twitch now. We were going to do it for you guys, but... <laughs> They also say if you've been enjoying Icarus and New Frontiers, please consider leaving a review on Steam. And you can do so and leave your honest review of the game, guys. So in Tier 2, you're going to go towards the middle here, where you're going to find just a little bit past the heavy obsidian chest armor. You'll find the bone chest armor, and you'll see the New Frontiers logo on it. And this is where you can unlock the five new pieces, the five new unlocks for bone armor. And Bone Armor does give a very interesting bonus set, and it is actually about six points less physical resistance than Composite Armor, believe it or not. It does have a much lower heat resistance and a little bit lower cold resistance as well as a lower exposure resistance, so it is not that great when it comes to that. But it does have a very, very good physical resistance, to be honest with you, for a very, very cheap set, if you ask me. Let's show you how to make this. You do have to use the textiles bench as it's shown here. And the bottom of the textiles bench, you'll see the bone armor and it is only crafted for bone and leather. So really just what you kill off of animals and then a textile bench and you can have you some bone armor and it has really good physical resistance and it looks amazing. And this is what the bone armor looks like. And it really does look really nice. I, I do like the look of the bone armor, I won't lie. It does look pretty good. Not too bad. It's going to be a really good early armor set for New Frontiers. So, But you can also make it anywhere you want once you learn it. So you just have to have the New Frontiers DLC. I'm pretty sure I'm not 100% positive on that, guys. Mostly because I have the DLC and I get everything for free anyway. So... I'm pretty sure this is just a New Frontiers DLC bone armor set, but you can use it wherever you want after you unlock it. Also this week, we have a brand new mount, and that new mount is the Terranus, and it is a horse-like creature that spawns in all three maps, Olympus, Styx, and Prometheus, in the forest or grassy lands biome. And this is the first of several new mounts, which is going to be making its way into the game which is great. The Terranus is a mount that's kind of in between the Moa and the Buffalo as far as utility, and it has 10% more speed than the Moa currently has. So to counter that, the Moa movement speed has been increased by 38%. Buffalo has also been increased by 8% as well to balance out the changes. So basically all mounts are just going to be moving faster now. And it requires a saddle just like the other mounts, and you tame it the same way. 
So this is a wild Terranus, and it will attack you. It is a hostile mount. If he gets close to you, it will start attacking you. This one doesn't have a baby, so we'll have to, we'll have to find us another one. So to tame one of these, all you have to do is kind of go up to the mommy. And of course, there's the little baby horsey right there. And what it looks like. That's so cute. That's so cute, little baby horsey. So you just gotta go up to the adult horse and kill it, like you do with any other one. And then now you could go up to the baby and claim it. And once you hit E on it, you'll see you're leading it. And just lead it back home to safety. So you can tame it. So just bring it back home and put them in a bed like so. And they'll grow up to be a big horsey and give them some food, some shelter and a bed. You know, just like the other two. And this will be the end result. You'll be able to ride your horsey. Now we do have three pheromone modules and that is another change that they made this week. They did actually make it where the modules are more now. So basically you'll have more stats for module. For example, mass dampeners are now 10% instead of five. And it kind of equals out to what it was or what it used to be before last week's change. With the exception of the Kickfall modules, I think they're only up to 70 instead of 75% kickfall resistance, but you could still get up to 99% if, if you do cap, you do not take damage. So you can go and have complete or 99% resistance to fall damage again. You could go back up and do mass dampeners again as well. And the mass dampeners, they'll go up to like 50, 75, and I think it's like 80 or 90 with four maybe. I can't remember. Mass dampeners are more now, and it kind of equals out to actually a little bit more movement speed than we had before. So, so modules did get buffed this week, and with the changes, you'll have it about what it was before or more, it seems like. But for the sake of this experiment, we're going to just show you the mount. We're going to feed it. And you can feed and water your mounts manually, yes. You just gotta put it on the bar and then right click. We're gonna feed it the new treat that will give it extra stamina. And then we'll also have the pheromone modules as well. Let's see how good of a stamina bar it has after this. It has a really good health bar, just kind of off the bat. But the stamina bar is even better with the pheromone modules and the stamina. And, and the movement speed is quite fast as well. I don't even think that bear seen me, to be honest with you. Oh, we're getting a little laggy. So the horse mount does actually attack as well, and it's a very weak attack. Let's take a look on this boar here and see what kind of damage we're doing. It's actually 45. And then it killed the boar with just a little bit of minimal health loss. And this is on hard, by the way. You could also hold E and access its inventory, and you'll see it does have five slots for you to be able to use. And you could put a G slot item in it as well. And it still has the basic stay and passive. So that's the new mount. And just touching on the module buffs and diminishing returns again. Diminishing returns are the same, but they did buff modules. And they kind of give a little list of module changes here. For example, the movement speed modules used to be 5, 10, 15, 20. And with the new diminishing returns and the new module stats, you'll get 10, 15, 18, and 20. Which means if you used to stack three speed modules, you're actually going to be getting about 3% additional movement speed now with the three stacked modules, even though they are diminished with that last module only giving you really 2%. So, but you could get up to 20%, which is what the old modules would let you do before. You can also do the old modules with fall resist. As we stated before, it's 40, 60, 70 with diminishing returns now, and it used to be 75 with all three. But you can still counter that with backpack. You can also do the alteration bench modules. And you can get up to 99%. And getting up to 99% will prevent you from taking any kind of sprain or 
completely breaking your legs. So pretty much it's back to the way it was before the update last week. So what that means is that modules will now provide better rewards for less investments, but you could still stack them like we used to before, and you'll still get the old level values, or at least close to them. As mentioned, we have DLSS 3.0 support now. DLSS 3.0 is now available in Icarus. So if you do have a 40 series card, GPU by GeForce, an RTX card that is a 40, which implements the DLSS 3.0, you can now enable it we'll show you how to do that so if you click on icarus and hit play you have an option of choosing dlss 12 which is only recommended for 3070s or better and you can hit play which will bring up icarus in dlss 12 mode then when you go to settings and go to display scroll all the way down and we'll see some new options underneath nvidia and you'll see frame generation now i don't have a 40 series card so as you can see here i cannot enable dlss 3.0 for you guys because it does require a 40 series or higher nvidia graphics card as it says there in the red also you have dlss 3 supported in your current system ensure installation of windows is update ensure the current gpu drivers are up to date and ensure you're running in directx 12 mode to run frame generation so all you can do is click on that once you meet those recommendations you also have super resolution now for dlss so you can go all these options here i use Go quality so you now have the options of putting frame generation into nvidia for the dlss 3.0 when you start up with directx 12 and as stated it is supposed to be giving you a frame boost so if you have a 40 series card or better and this does actually improve your performance comment down below we'd love to hear about it so this week we got some news on Hypatia. They pretty much finished New Frontiers and doing some tweaks, so they're going to focus their efforts on Hypatia, the newest free update. They've been converting missions, and they've been playing them on their Twitch streams. They're also converting the mission requirements for some Prometheus missions and adjusting the mission flow. This will include centralizing all missions launch interactions with one device that you upgrade rather than three separate devices for each tier of operation. So they're basically going to have an upgrade system with those open world mission launchers. So they also have next week UDA resource supply packs and next week for sale in the workshop there'll be a collection of UDA resource supply packs and those will be unlocked for Ren which will allow you to deliver some resources planet side directly to you thanks to the orbital exchange interface. And in addition, simple missions will be available on Outpost and will grant you a small amount of Ren upon completion. So you're going to be able to get Ren in Outpost. Without further ado, we have the change log for you. We're going to be showing you all the new content section this week. Of course, the Terranus is added to the bestiary. <laughs> Says here, unlocking bone armor for all players to have as the Twitch drops campaign fell through. So other than what we mentioned, that was it for the new content. Let's look over the fix section this week. Mounts will no longer attempt to drink from lava lakes. Thank God. Buff the movement speed module from 5 to 10%. Buff the fall damage module from 25 to 40%, taking into account diminishing returns on stacking. Buff the consumption module 10% to 15%. They also buff the inventory slot modules from 2 to 3 and 5 to 6, and they do not have diminishing returns. They buff the carry weight module from 5 to 15%, taking into account diminishing returns on stacking. They debuffed fishing module from 25% to 10%, as the fish caught quality was too high. Its a cast unique was unchanged at 200%. They debuffed taming module. Stamina was 100% to 50%. Speed was unchanged. Magmatic update rewards to grant red exotics instead of purple exotics. In Shadow, they rebound spawn rates of creatures, notably first and third zones have been reduced creature count. And on Dispatch, reduced difficulty of creatures in the defense phase. They fixed a case where players would not get mission rewards if they weren't present for the start of the mission after they had previously completed one on the same prospect, example, open world. So this one's interesting. It says reduce the wind turbine collision range to be two tiles instead of four. This is incorrect, and I'll show you why. So this is exactly how far away you can have windmills. 
and we use concrete for good reason as you can see concrete is separated up in one little block into two separate blocks like so so we got it on the very very edge of a concrete block here it said two blocks one two two would be right there and if you place a windmill right there it will not work but if you place it right here in the middle of the second and a half block so about like two and a half spaces it seems like let me pick this up and show you exactly what i'm talking about if you take this one right here and put it where two blocks would have been which is right there that is one two three four squares away you'll notice that it overlaps and it overlaps quite a bit actually see how much it's overlapping there to the left so yeah, it's kind of more like two and a half guys if you will just kind of just do two and a half and you should be safe We'll pick it up. We'll do another half like to right here on the edge You could do it right in the middle if you want, but it's right in the edge just if you're using these Two and a half and that will work for sure, but they did reduce the range that you need so Oh no, here comes a windstorm. And we just seen a little bit of it, but it just said highlighting the wind turbines where all collision areas will show from all turbines. So you should be able to see all turbines when you highlight a turbine now. Also, the ice box, refrigerator, and deep freeze can now store ice. Here's an interesting change. The Arctic head armor no longer requires Arctic pelts, but instead requires one polar bear head. So you basically got to kill a polar bear and skin it with a taxidermy knife to get the Arctic head armor. And as mentioned before, at capped fall resistance, you will not get sprains or break your legs. And they're reducing wind turbine collision range to be slightly smaller again. Obsidian pickaxe will enable gathering of all ores. And all obsidian tools now use obsidian rather than shaped obsidian. And then right after that, it says obsidian tools now correctly use shaped obsidian again. I, I don't know, guys, at this point. And heavy obsidian armor now uses raw obsidian to repair as intended. And we got just a little tiny future content section at a Niagara system. So we should be getting the equests and blueback soon trophies. And they did some landscape bitches, and that was about it. There's nothing else in the changelog this week. Hey, did you know we had a Discord? We also post our updates to our streams and all that in our Discord. And this is a great place for news and stuff about the channel. Links in the description down below if you're interested. Thank you, Late Night Crew, KHX, Sergio, Sandy, Silver, John, Diana, EMC2, Rod Knob, Novocaine, Aaron, Juan, and Steady Bob. Thank, Thank you so you. much for supporting our channel and for being part of the Late Night Crew, our exclusive YouTube membership where you can get exclusive videos only available to our YouTube members. Also, crew members get a shout out on every update video that we do for for every game thank you thank you thank you and that's it for this video don't forget if you like what you see to like comment and subscribe to the channel subscribing will get you weekly icarus update videos just like this one and content videos when we release those or update those also this week we're going to be playing just starfield saturday and friday but we will be back to Icarus content streams next friday so look forward to that where we'll be playing with a horse probably and hopefully we will see you next time. Me and this horse here, we're gonna go and uh, ride into the sunset, I guess. In the desert.